In this video, I will explain how to use the financial statement and drill down functionality in Blitz report. So let's open a Blitz report form here from the Excel icon in the menu. And then let's navigate to our GL financial statement and drill down report. And similar to other Blitz reports, we can run a report for different templates. So if you have existing balance sheets or financial statements, you can save them on the server as templates, and then you can run it for these balance sheets. But for now, let's run it without a template so that it opens an empty Excel file. And then I will show how to create a financial statement in there. So the file that is opening now is a macro enabled file. The extension is XLSM, so you would need to have your macros enabled. And up here, we have an additional menu entry called Blitz FSG, where we have different functionality. We have on the left, for example, we have an exit icon. If you see that exit icon, that means you're currently connected to the server. So if you would save the balance sheet on your laptop and then open up the file later on, then you are not connected anymore. And then instead of this exit icon, you would see a login button. And then you would need to click on the login button and enter your password and then connect to the server. So that's how that exit and login works. And here, the second icon is a button to select the current responsibility. And that decides then to which ledgers you would have access. You might have different responsibilities, for example, with different lecture access, and then you can select those different responsibilities. And that would enable you to access the ledgers here or the ledger data in this Blitz FSG functionality. So the list of value here for the ledgers would dynamically change depending on the responsibilities selected. And then you have discover functionality here to load, for example, the account segment value. So let me just show you how that works. We have also here checkboxes where we can decide if we would only see the parent values. We could, for example, say we would like to load all the parent account segment values with this functionality to discover down all functionality. You see, now we have all the parent account segment values. And in a similar way, we could say we would like to have the parent and the child. Let's just do that. And then we have now the parent values and also the child values in between. And we have some values which are probably created as test accounts like this, and we have more functionality here on the right. We have, for example, these, uh, this create button, and that means it creates a list of value on the Excel cell that we have currently selected. So if you would like to have financial period name here in this Excel cell, we can select a list of value for the financial period. And then when we double click, we have a list of value of all our financial periods. And then we could highlight different cells, for example, until column N, that would be 12 periods. And then we could use this discover functionality. But before we do that, we need to select the, uh, the field type. So Blitz report needs to understand that this is a period name field and we can discover all the values to the right. That means from the start value, January 08, it automatically populates the, the highlighted cells with the subsequent values. And let me change the font here as well and say we would like to freeze the top row. And now we can load the, the balances. So to load the financial data from the server, the balances, we can click on this icon here, the balance icon. And then we have a screen where we can enter the parameters. For example, the period name, we could hard code it or we could say the period name should come from this Excel cell. And the, then we have different parameter fields for the account type or amount types. That is period to date, quarter to date, year to date, custom to date. That would mean that you have a selection of different financial periods. For example, you could select a uh, couple non sequential financial periods and then uh, retrieve the balances for those at the same time. And then we have amount types for the financial year start and year end balances as well. And then we can select, for example, if we would like to see actual or budgets or encumbrances. So we can do an actual versus budget comparison, for example, in the same Excel sheet. And let's say the company, we would like to hard code it to 01 for this test case. And the account should come from this Excel cell. And then we create a function. You see here the function called BR for Blitz report underscore balance. And then we have the different parameters. In this case, we 
have only referenced the period name from the cell C1 and the account segment value from the field A2. And then we can copy this function into all the other Excel cells like that. And then we can load the values. And to load the values, we have here this refresh menu option. And easiest is to just click on the pending. Then it refreshes the values for all the records which are currently showing as pending. So this is now 6,743 Excel cells. So that's why it takes a while. And we can make the columns a little bit larger like that. And then we have some additional functionality. For example, you see here we have many accounts which don't have any movements at all. We can use this height zero functionality for those like that. And then we only have the ones which have values. And yeah, so then now we have our balance sheet. We can also, uh, for this example, I just used the discover down functionality to load all the account segment values. If we don't, if we would not like to have just exactly one value, if you would like to have a combination of values, we could also on this uh, Excel cell, we could create a list of value for the account segment, let's say like this. And then we can double click and then we have a pop-up screen where we can select the different values at the same time. So this is for 20. You can maybe select not just for 20, we can select all of these or we could even select the range. So we could say we would like to have, let's say from here to here, all the values or we could exclude certain values. So we could say we would like to exclude these two values so that when we click OK, it creates, in this Excel cell, it creates a list of all these accounts. So the syntax is that we have the individual account separated by semicolon. If we have a range, then we see it separated with a minus sign, with a hyphen here. And the exclusions have a, the tilde character at the beginning, like that. And now we have these Excel cells because the values are no longer valid. We have them as pending. We can click on pending again to load these values. And these values, which I'm loading now, they reflect the combination of all these accounts. So that's how that works. Okay, then we have drill down functionality. So all, on all of these balances, you can drill down into the details. So for example, if we have, where's the revenue? Here we have the revenue accounts. So we have, for example, the hardware revenue. We have 14.9 million in May 08. If we would like to see the details, we can just double click. And then it runs another blitz report showing us the details on code combination level. So here we have different product segments and different departments on that 4110 account. And to drill down further, we could, uh, to the journal line, we could click on the hyperlink, or if we want to drill down to more than one record at the same time, we can just highlight them. And then we can right click and select the journal drill down. So this is journal line level. Here we have, for example, sales invoices and one credit memo journal line. And we can drill down further to the right. We can drill down to the uh, subledger details for one record or to the journal attachment or to the full journal as well. Or we can again highlight certain rows like that and then right click and we can drill down to the subledger like that. And subledger means uh, the account analysis level. That means one record is one transaction. And behind this uh, report, there's also a blitz report. So it is possible to create your own custom SQL, for example, and users that can also create their own templates and hide or show different columns. So here, for example, we have different columns for the project ex project related expenditures and all these records, they are not project related. So if you don't use projects, you might want to hide these columns. So that can be done with a template. And further to the right, we have more details, transaction information, and we also have a hyperlink. So we can click on this hyperlink and that opens the Oracle form for that transaction. So that should be a sales invoice. Yeah, it's a sales invoice coming from order management. Okay, let's go back to the Blitz report and show how the template works. So let's assume you would like to have a different set of columns, not all of these. So you can here on the start on the main screen and the menu, 
you have a button with the layout options. So you can click on these layout options and here you have different options. So you could, for example, decide what should happen when you double click on one of these Excel cells. You can choose balance. That means it would open a balance function and the default is drill down. Then it uh, opens the drill down into the next level. And then you can decide if you would like to open a drill down in the same workbook or in a new, uh, new workbook. So in the same workbook like this, it would open additional sheets for the drill down data and new workbook, it would just create a separate workbook. And further down, you have here a selection of templates and reports. So you have here, for example, the possibility, let me go here. So you have the possibility to select the, the templates and the reports on the left are the reports that are used by Blitz report to generate data. So for example, the journal report is this one, GL journals, and the subledger report is this one, GL account analysis in brackets drill down. So if you would like to have your own custom query for this, your IT team, they can uh, create a custom SQL and then they modify a profile option so that the, the drill down would use a different query. And as a user, you have the option to select a different template. So if you would like to create a template, you would need to open a Blitz report form, for example, for the account analysis in brackets drill down. So let's open that report, GL account analysis, this one here. And here you can create a template in the same way as for other Blitz reports. For example, all the expenditure columns. If we don't need the expenditure columns because we don't use projects, we can hide them. And then we can call this test template without expenditures like this. And now the template is saved. That means next time when we open the layout options, we can select the template from here. Test template without expenditures. And next time when we drill down, it opens exactly those columns. So what I showed so far was double clicking and then going to the drill down. We can also drill down directly to the lowest level, for example, to the subledger level. And we can also do a multiple selection. So we could, for example, say we would like to drill down into all the financial periods from May to July 08 at the same time to the subledger details like that. And now it opens the subledger report directly without these expenditure columns because I created the custom template and you see no longer has the expenditure columns. So that's how the templates work. Then there is uh, more functionality here on the left, and that is expand and explode. That might also be interesting. So expand means we can expand a range of segment values from the parents to the child. For example, let's assume you did not have the total revenue details like this. Let me just delete those lines. You had only a parent account like this. You could click on expand. Let's say down hierarchy down all. And then it loads all the sub uh, uh, sub segments and the, the child segments under the parent account 4000 into vertical, yeah, into additional rows. And it also copies the Excel cell. And we could, for example, now load the values. Now it loads slightly more values like that. Okay, so now we have our values. But you see here, the description is not correct because it simply copied the text. So this one was a free text field. So uh, Blitz report doesn't know that this is the segment description. So instead of using a st just a standard text, we could now load a segment description also with a function. So here we have a function called segment description. And if, then we could say the segment type is account. The segment value should come from here and we can load the value like that. And we could copy that function to all our created records like this. And then we can load the segment descriptions like that.
Okay, so that works. And then you also have functions uh, for the period offset that might also be useful because, for example, if you would like to run it for a different year, let's say 2007, only this value changes, but not all the subsequent periods because this is just a text because we use the discover right to the right functionality and then it's not dynamic. To make it dynamic, you could use a period offset function. You could say this Excel cell should be based on this one and it should have a period of set of one. And then you could copy that function and you could say you want to load everything, all the values. And then it recursively loads these financial periods like that. And then it loads all the balance records. So now it loads all the balances on the whole sheet. So that is the, the use of functions. And you could also, of course, because it's actually standard, you could use uh, standard calculations. You can use also these balance functions in your formulas and so on. So you could, for example, do something like this and then copy that value to all the cells down like this. And let's assume you have created a balance sheet like this and you would like to make it reusable. Then you would save the file. And right now it's on my laptop and you would either open it up from your laptop again then you might have to log in again or you could just upload it to the server so that's the best way so you could create a new template new template click on the new template button then upload the file from your downloads folder this one here and then the file is loading to the server and then you can give it a certain name let's say balance sheet example like that and then you could also make it available to other users by using the sharing button here so you could for example share it on site level that means you make it available for everyone or you could share it only with specific responsibilities as well so those are the options so that's how you would reuse the file. And then someone else could go into uh, that report, select a template, and then run it from the server. Okay, so that's the sharing option. Then there is the explode functionality. So the explode functionality allows to create different balance, uh, different sheets in the same workbook based on different values. For example, if you have a department segment value and you would like to show all the departments on different Excel sheets. So for this, this example is not so good. Let me open a different example from the server. So we have here our income summary statement, this one here. And now it's opening up again from the server. Loading the values. Okay, so let me first load all the values from the server. So here in this workbook, we have different calculations. So we have here this revenue line comes from the cell H1 from here. So you, you have the periods, financial periods, for example, is referenced from here so that if you would like to change it, let's say to January 08, you only need to change it in the top row. And then you can click on refresh and then it reloads everything dependently. So that's typically what users do that they have at the top uh, parameter sheet where all the values are referenced from. So here we have the balance function. So let's see what it depends on. So the balance function depends, for example, on the amount type so here we have actuals and then further to the right in column r we also have budget budget line and then we have also calculated balances so here for example this one is calculated column p minus column r so that is the total uh, of all these financial periods minus the budget so that's how that works and the the balance is, for example, also dependent on the department. And the department here is a range of different departments. So we have 00, 401 until 420, then excluding 402 and so on. And all these departments, if you would like to see them on different Excel sheets, then you can highlight the cell like this. Then you typically would tell Blitz report which field 
type it is. So this is a department field. And then you can click on explode. And what happens now is that it creates different Excel sheets with those different departments. So you see here that the cell value E2 reflects the different uh, values from that range that was highlighted. And then you could uh, yeah, load all these department dependent Excel sheets like that. So that's how that works. Or if you would like to load all of them, you would click here on the workbook refresh and then it refreshes all the Excel sheets one by one. So now it starts on the first one, then goes to the second and third one and so on. Yeah, that takes a few seconds. So that is the explode functionality. And then up here in the menu, what I did not show yet are these icons further to the right. So you have here the snapshot icon. So the snapshot icon means that you create a copy of the current workbook and worksheet with the actual value so that you could share it in an email. So it would no longer have then the function. So let me show you that. So if I click on snapshot, it created now a new file or creates a new file. So now it's finished. And this new file has the actual value. So here, for example, it no longer has functions. So you see this one is just directly the, the value instead of function. So you could, this workbook, you could share them with someone else because they no longer need to have a connection to the server. So that's the snapshot functionality. Let me close this again. And then we have two more interesting functionalities which are used to convert. So that is here further to the right. So we have conversion possibilities from Oracle standard financial statements. That is here the Oracle FSG conversion. And then also from different third party tools, for example, from GL1 or spreadsheet server. Let me first show you the Oracle standard financial statement conversion. So if you have, yeah, for that, let me open an empty Excel file again. Or we could also do it in the same. That is quicker then. So let's just open an additional Excel sheet. And here we can select that Oracle FSG converter functionality. And then we select our financial statement from Oracle. For example, this one, analysis report. And the converter loads the definition from the Oracle FSG into Blitz report now. So let me just refresh the values. Oh, I did not change the financial period. So for July 25, there's not much data. Let's run it for January, July 08 instead. It should be better. And you see here on the left, so these are the, is the row set definition with the different segment values. And then we have the column sets here and we have uh, certain fields which we cannot automatically convert. For example, the calculation here, this is uh, these columns, these two columns, they are to indicate which calculations we have. For example, here we have a calculated row, row 17, which is the sum of all the labels from 10 to 19. So all these. So that means we would need to add the sum from, oh, equals sum like that for all these Excel cells. And that would apply to the whole row 17. So we can extend it to here like that. And then we have, have also this one is the sum from label 25 to 129. So 25 we don't have, also not 129. So it means basically all of these together no, like this. And then we can extend it to the right. And the same with the last row. This one is the sum of 130 to 139. So 130 is here. 139 is this, so it's basically just these two. So that's how we would add these additional calculations, which are not automatically migrated. And then once we have done that, we no longer need these two columns because they're just to understand these calculations. And we have additional calculations here at the end. So you see this one is also a calculated column. So it's plus 10 plus 20. So these are the labels, label 10, label 20, label 30, and so on. And the labels are up here. So this is 10. So basically everything. So this is the sum of all of these. 
so that's how you would complete your financial statement. And then once we have done all this, let's just do it like that. So now it's complete. So once we have done it, completed, then we no longer need this calculation row. We could remove it. And also the sequence, we no longer need it. And then you have your, your financial statement in Blitzyport. Let me just load all the values again. Okay, like this. And then we could save it and yeah, save changes with all the signature. That's okay. And then we can upload it to the server and say we have here finish the statement and drill down. And then it's in Blitz report. And this is our FSG conversion example, like that. So that's how you would migrate your Oracle FSGs. And we also have an automated migration option for third party tools like GL1. And that is a little bit easier than what I just showed you. So let me open an empty Excel file for that. And this one, maybe we can close. Okay, this is now an empty Excel file. At the same time, we would open our GL1 spreadsheet. So here we have an example, sample GL1 file, this one here. So this is our GL1 workbook. And you see, for example, for the balance functions, it uses the GL1 syntax, GLW, get balance, and so on. And also these account ranges, they have a different syntax and so on. So what you would do is you would move or copy. You would first highlight all the Excel sheets in your workbook. So if it's more than one, in this case, it's just one. So you will highlight all the Excel sheets. And then you would say move or copy. And then you would move it into our Blitzyport workbook, this one here, create a copy like that. So now we have everything in Blitzyport. And then we can close the original one, which was this one. And now we have the, the GL1 workbook in our Blitzyport workbook. And we can simply click on the converter option here. And then it goes through all the 7,600 Excel cells and it has converted everything. So the default sheet we no longer need. That means now we have it in Blitz report and we can load the values for the 5,181 cells. So now it's loading it from the server. And you see our converter functionality, for example, changes the syntax from the GL1 syntax and also the parameters work differently. And there are a couple of differences basically, but that's the whole migration process. And then you can save it again on the server and load it to the server as a template. And then everything can be run in Blitz report. That was the main functionality of the financial statement generator in Blitz report. Thanks for watching.